is just fantastic. Captain's Lock, subdates 220301.6. Never, never have I ever seen a case like the one we're covering today. There are levels, by the way, levels to all forms of crimes, and this one, quite frankly, takes the cake. Pun intended. Welcome everyone to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number 117 to the ISO cubes. Inmates 117 is called Cynthia Perkins. There are, however, two other people that may well, more than likely, spend time in the ISO cubes as well for a considerably long time. They are Cynthia Perkins' ex-husband, Dennis Perkins, and Melanie Curtis, who is having an affair with Dennis Perkins. The crimes that they have all committed, some of which are ongoing or having retrials or awaiting sentencing, are dark. One of which will make you immediately, if you have that sense of humour, think of Van Wilder's house party and the cream cakes. There's a spoiler for you. So consider this now your trigger warning, because a lot of what we are going to discuss today is quite graphic and disturbing. We are going to start by discussing who Cynthia Perkins is. We will also be discussing who Dennis Perkins is and Melanie Curtis when it ties into the story. I do, however, want to make it quite clear. Melanie Curtis will more than likely get her own halls of injustice as her crimes are not fully connected, but also she is attempting to get a retrial. And as far as Dennis Perkins go, he has not been sentenced yet. I do believe this has something to do with the plea bargain that was struck with Cynthia Perkins. So we're going to discuss who they are, the crimes that they committed over a considerable amount of time, and there are a lot of crimes, how they were arrested, what happened at the trial, the verdict and the sentence. So to start, who is Cynthia Perkins and Dennis Perkins? Cynthia Perkins is a 36-year-old former teacher from Louisiana, and Dennis Perkins is a 44-year-old former Livingston Parish Sheriff's Deputy. Cynthia taught English at Westside Junior High School. Cynthia is also a mother to three children. They're not going to see her for a while, and they might not want to see her for a while. We'll get to why soon. She's also a devoted Christian, which you're going to wonder a lot about soon enough. Dennis was at the peak of his career, the top of a SWAT crew both of whom were highly respected within the community that they resided within. Because let's face it, a teacher and a police officer, family of five devoted Christians, essentially the model family on the outside. The core of the two heads of the household, though, were rotten, to the tune of 150 charges. So I guess we should probably get into what it is Cynthia and Dennis Perkins have done. I'm going to one last time insert a trigger warning. The subject matter is incredibly dark. It has been for a few HOJs, I know. But this one, this one's a very different level of dark. And you might not believe it when I tell you what happened. Some have suggested that this would never have happened had Dennis Perkins not met Cynthia. There is some truth to that, I'm sure. But in reality, both are guilty, it doesn't really matter about what if. On September 23rd, 2019, the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation Cybercrime Unit received a cyber tip report from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children containing information regarding possible distribution of images of child sexual abuse in violation of LA.R.S. 14 colon 81.1 pornography involving juveniles upon further investigation lbi agents were able to trace the ip address of the user uploading the images to defendant dennis wallace perkins initial returns for search warrants for dennis perkins provided agents with images of child pornography video voyeurism of children images of dennis perkins ejaculating on pastries and images of Dennis Perkins exposing his penis in public places. LBI agents obtained a warrant for the arrest of Dennis Perkins and a search warrant for his residence in Denham Springs. Dennis was located in many Louisiana on the 22nd of October 2019 while on a fishing expedition in Toledo Bend. During questioning, 
Dennis Perkins advised LBI and LPSO agents that he tossed his cell phone into the lake prior to meeting with them. Once questions progressed to the possession of images of naked children, he requested an attorney. A group of LBI agents conducted a search of the Perkins residence. The scope of the investigation broadened significantly when during a forensic preview of electronic devices located within the residence, agents uncovered extensive images of child pornography. Approximately 60 images were discovered wherein a prepubescent female child, under the age of 13, is positioned in a manner where her genitalia is lewdly exhibited and or involved in sexual activity, to include oral rape and digital penetration of the vagina. In these images, Dennis Perkins' wife, Cynthia Perkins, is seen moving the sleeping child's clothing aside to lewdly exhibit the genitalia, as well as engaging in sexual activity with Dennis Perkins while directly on or next to the child. In another series of images, Cynthia is seen holding the child's head in place while Dennis orally rapes her. The agents successfully identified the child and confirmed her to be under the age of 13. This led to an amendment of the original arrest warrant which added the production of 60 counts of pornography of a child under the age of 13 and two counts of first-degree rape of a child under the age of 13. During the search of the residence on October 22, 2019, Cynthia Perkins arrived in the late evening at the home. She was Mirandized and submitted voluntarily to questioning. When shown the images uncovered involving juvenile victim 1, Cynthia simply stopped responding to questions with an arrest warrant being obtained for Cynthia for the production of 60 counts of child pornography and two counts of first-degree rape of a child under the age of 13. The dates for the crimes committed go back to April 5, 2019. Crimes committed by Cynthia and by Dennis can be traced back to video voyeurism of 2014 and first-degree rape. All 150 are explained in great detail in a PDF that I've linked down below. Honestly, if you're into reading this kind of material that explains what happened, when it happened, and whether the victim was identified at a later date or not, by all means, give it a read. There is more, though, to add. For example, you have the other crimes, wrongs, and bad acts, which is further referenced in this article. 1. Role play. The defendants acted out a fantasy of having sex with juvenile victim 1. 2. Juvenile rape fantasy. A written, quotations, note. 3. Cynthia Perkins domestic abuse battery of juvenile victim 1 4. Dennis Perkins internet searches for child sexual abuse and child pornography 5. Photoshopped images of children in sexually suggestive positions with Dennis Perkins 6. The banana video brackets additional photoshop fantasy In the video, Dennis Perkins has a juvenile put a banana near their mouth to then stick out their tongue and pretend that she is licking the banana. 7. The driveway photo shoot of Juvenile Victim 2. This is where forensic examiners located 17 lewd photos of a child under the age of 17, taken around the time of March 18th, 2019. The juvenile in question appears to be unaware that she is being photographed. The photos themselves are focused on the juvenile's genital area while she was sitting. 8. Spy watch in the bathroom. This one stems from an adult female who was in a relationship with Dennis Perkins. She had advised the police that Dennis had possessed a spy watch and had hidden video recording capabilities and would film unsuspecting people with it. 9. Video of unidentified female juvenile naked in bathroom. 10. Two part video of sleeping unidentified juvenile females. 11. Another video of a sleeping unidentified juvenile female. 12. The traffic stop. During a traffic stop, Dennis Perkins' camera was aimed towards the female that was checking for her driver's license breasts. As she leant across the center console of a glove box, Dennis moved his camera to be angled up her jean shorts. He did that three times. There are 17 in total additional incidents that are being added to this. Whether it be voyeurism, rape, obstruction of justice, it is quite thorough. And as you can tell, it does heavily focus on Dennis. That's not to say for a second that Cynthia doesn't play a key part in all of this. In fact, 60 of those 150 charges or counts was levied at her as well. Because as earlier stated, she was involved in a lot of the production of this sickening content. 
which does include something not really embellished upon in the article, and that is the fact that she would serve up food for kids at school. That food, as earlier you might have noticed, had been enhanced in a negative manner by that of Dennis Perkins' own semen, akin to that of Van Wilder's house party, and those cakes were fed to kids at the school that Cynthia worked at, along with pastries and energy drinks. So what happened after the arrest that isn't mentioned here? At the moment that Cynthia Perkins was arrested, she filed for immediate divorce from her husband and alleged that Dennis Perkins had manipulated her into committing the crimes, which seemed a tad counter to some of the evidence presented in court. For example, Count 15, in the original indictment against the couple, it alleges that semen was mixed into both the desserts and energy drinks before it was served to victims, those being the children at the West Side Junior High School, where Cynthia worked. Certainly when you add all the evidence, picture evidence more notably, with Cynthia in smiling, partaking, and getting involved, it is hard to believe that she was coerced. Cynthia also, after being arrested, resigned from Westside Junior High School. Dennis was fired from his deputy role at the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Just for the sake of transparency now, Dennis Perkins' trial begins in May, so he will get a follow-up video don't worry. It was around the time of the arrests and during the investigation that a third person was arrested. That third person is Melanie Curtin. She was charged with video voyeurism and aggravated rape. Because she's seeking a retrial, I am not going to go through her sentence because I think it would be better to do a follow-up at a later date. As the charges were railed off and the prosecution presented its case, the defense tried to portray Cynthia Perkins as somebody who was manipulated and coerced. Victim impact statements were to the contrary, along with statements from family members who were hardly impressed at what had happened. So to negate a trial, which means by extension all previous evidence and people who had taken the stand, the victims more importantly, was negated, Cynthia Perkins agreed to a plea deal. With that, we get a sentence but I want to read some of the statements first. You are a selfish and horrible person, and I hope you rot in prison. This statement was read by a child's father, along with saying, I wrote this to let you know that you didn't break me down. Cynthia Perkins said, I would like to apologize to my three children. I haven't spoken to them in three years. I love them and I miss them, and I am sorry. I doubt they're going to want to spend much time with you in the future. One victim impact statement, identified Cynthia Perkins as Dennis Perkins's Huntress, a nickname. Cynthia, you've most definitely proven to be the most deceitful person ever. Now I want everyone listening to know you were one of my best friends. I did everything to keep you safe. I loved you. I hope for the next 41 years you pray for your soul, for the lives you have destroyed, and the victims you have hurt. So with this, we now get to a sentence because a guilty plea has been entered. This part is going to be interesting. Inmate 117, aka Cynthia Perkins, had faced 72 charges for various sex crimes. 68 of them were dropped in her plea agreement. One part of this plea agreement means that she must testify against her husband, Dennis Perkins. She pled guilty to second-degree rape, production of child pornography, and conspiracy of mingling harmful substances in Livingston. Her sentence is 41 years prison. But this one's an interesting sentence for two glaringly obvious reasons, which I'll get to in a moment because there's a little more to add. First of which is that she will sign on the sex offender's register for life. So the two parts of that sentence, the 40 years that really stands out, is that she has no possibility of parole for 40 years, meaning by the time she is released, she will be, if she reaches it, 76 years old. But here comes the second part, and this is the part that makes you wonder if she'll even reach 76 in the first place. You see, I know this from prison documentaries, so when I heard she got 40 years, I knew there was going to be more to it. 
You see, Louisiana, they like it if you earn your way, which means to earn your way, you do hard labor. I had assumed that the reason why she accepted this sentence was because she knows in the state of Louisiana, capital punishment still exists and would have been a very distinct possibility. So to take 40 years knowing you're getting 40 years and nothing less would seem preferable to deadness. Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry, upon hearing this sentence, said she not only waived any right to appeal and attempt to avoid conviction, but she also spared the victims from reliving her horrific crimes during this particular trial. And Cynthia Perkins' attorneys said that Dennis Perkins is the real monster. That's what she wants to make clear. It is not about shifting blame. She took responsibility today. I mean, that's what she did. But she looks forward to going after the real monster. Because as is well established, she's going to get so many great perks doing hard labor for 40 years. Congratulations. As I've already said, Dennis Perkins will get a separate video, a follow-up of sorts. And you will get one on Melanie Curtin when her appeals have been exhausted, because she got a rather nasty sentence as well. As far as the sentence in this case goes, it would take me too long to go through state law for Louisiana to tell you whether it is correct or not. A plea deal was struck, so it didn't go through a trial. Therefore, the sentence was agreed upon by both sides. My view, it's essentially a life sentence, but the damage has been done and I'd rather it was hard labor for the rest of her years along with immediate castration, and your dinner shall forever henceforth be a cockmeat sandwich, and nothing else served on Nutri-Loaf.